Um, How's everyone doing? That's nice. Um, I want to say that we're at a Star Trek theme WordPress conference, and my first name is Scott, and not one person has come up to me and said, beam me up, Scotty. Now, what I like to do is people do that. I go, what are you talking about? And they go, Star Trek. And I'm talking about what you mean, like, with the light swords and stuff? And they go, no, that's Star Wars. And I said, well, what's the difference? And they go, you know, Scotty, beam me up. What, did that show with the ball guy? And they go, no. And I can't only do it so long without cracking a smile, but yeah, I like doing that, so. Hmm? <laughs> okay, so uh, all the funny stuff aside, uh, hi, my name's Scott, I work for CCL Branding. Um, my topic, we just talked about optimizing WordPress, WordPress running for use with Gutenberg and advanced custom fields. Um, I submitted this when I did my talk in Raleigh, and I don't know if you can see the fine print. It's a fine print for a reason. Um, this is essentially uh, more than, did anybody see uh, the, uh, well, you know, most of you weren't here in Raleigh, so probably didn't see that. Um, oh, one other thing I want to say, uh, two years ago when I spoke here, the last time I almost passed out and had to leave the stage, I want you all to know I had a muffin and some yogurt, so I should be okay. All right, so now I'm done with the funny stuff. All right, so I learned a lot from when I did this um, in Raleigh, so I'm going to cover actually more than what the title says. So if you were hoping for less, I'm sorry. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through all this. I'm just going to punch you in the face with a bunch of data, and then I'm going to go into WordPress. We're going to look at an example, and then I'll go through the code again um, to cover all the stuff I'm talking about here. So this is me. This is my website, scottsaunders.design. I'm a senior front-end developer for CCL Branding at Winston-Salem. I've been doing WordPress development for 12 years. Before that, I was an illustrator, and before that, I was an Apple Higher Ed Systems Engineer from Ellen, D.C., in Virginia. I've been a – what else? Uh, instructional technologist and uh, bounced my way in college and you know, that doesn't matter though not pertinent to this um, here's some more of my stuff uh, my website codepad stuff dribble facebook um, other two websites that i do for fun um, diesel punk industries and pulp library uh, which i just started that's my website um, here's some stuff I build with WordPress, uh, corporate sites, digital signage, so I configure the mini PCs. Um, people connect the content with WordPress, and it updates all the machines after they do it, so we're using REST. Um, archiving tools, which is Pulp Library and Diesel Punk Industries, that's what those are. Interactive sales presentations, this slideshow is in WordPress. And Roku and Amazon channels, presentation tools, which I don't know why I put that in there twice, because technically that's what this is. Uh, Web-based iPad apps, which is part of the Pope Library, I'll talk about that again, and this stuff dreams are made of. Okay, um, this is some of the stuff, yay, that's cool, okay, um, next. Okay, so I'm going to start, we're going to do the basic stuff, and that's free, and that's using, is anyone here, uh, how many people are familiar with advanced custom fields? Sweet, okay, um, so that's key to this, uh, uh, let me see, then I go to Advanced Custom Fields Pro. So I'm going to start with this. As I go through this presentation, it's going to actually go from the basic to the intermediate. And if we have time, we'll go to the complex where I'm replacing Gutenberg entirely, but they probably don't be doing that, so I don't know if I have time for that. Okay, uh, let's keep going. Okay, so the example I'm going to be using is the Pulp Library. Um, the Latin at the bottom roughly translates, means uh, books with science and adventure. Uh, um, if you run it through Google Translate, you'll get another translation completely. Um, all right, so what this consists of? This consists of a .php file, and I'm using, if you can see, uh, I don't know if you can read that, uh, uses PHP glob. I'm sorry. Can you read that Is that? Okay. Um, it uses PHP glob to read a directory of images, and then I pass it a variable in the URL. And I'm, I'm getting a little bit of feedback. Is that? But is that better? Okay, I'll, I'll push the mic back. That seems to have taken care of it. Seems to have. Okay, so it's a static PHP file that reads a directory and then spits out all the images um, for that. Um, then in WordPress, there's WordPress part where I have two custom post types. Um, there's the pulp, which is a single magazine, and then the collection, and then all that spit out on the home page. I'll go into more of that. And with advanced, using uh, advanced custom fields, I'm going to be using uh, 
single field for the pulp, the repeater for the pulp collection, and a repeater for the home page. You guys are familiar with ACF, you know what repeaters are, right? Okay, cool. All right, and this is what it looks like. And here's a quick video. This is what the pulp reader looks like. Um, now, it works really cool. You save this as an iPad app, and you can read it, and it does all this cool stuff here. So, And again, this is using a uh, design mode of slide. Essentially gutted it and had spitting out the PHP, spitting out all the images. So you can do that. Yeah, that's cool. Because man has lived too long beneath the yoke of poor comic book. And oh, this works really good with comic books too. Uh, comic book and pulp readers. And I'm using an ACF theme uh, relationship field. I'm not going to go into too much detail about this, but if you've ever used the plug in post to post and many to many, um, this is a really good uh, replacement for that. So you can actually eliminate an entire plugin um, using the relationship stuff. Um, but that's part of this. Um, okay, yeah, and, and, and I mean, this is uh, a show if I'm still, because it's my stuff, I have to do it for clients, so I have to answer for anybody. I'm not entirely sure that what I'm showing you is a good idea, so just boo, um, have fun, I guess. Um, okay, so let me, I'm not sure the best way to do this. I want to go through all of it, and then I'm going to go, we're going to go look at the WordPress theme. You think that's going to work, or how do you guys, uh, anyway. Um, I'm going to go through it, and then it, it'll go through pretty quick, and then we'll go and look at it on WordPress. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is modify the functions.php file. And you can see I'm doing an NQ. I've got a uh, admin.js, and that's only going to do two things. I've got a NQ style, which that's I'm going to style the uh, back end of, uh, it's not really the back end, the front back end of WordPress, the stuff where you edit all the crap. That's what I'm modifying with that. And for fun, I'm including some font. And if you look, the material icon from Google, because uh, why not? Okay, so uh, you'll see why I do that too. All right, and uh, this is what it looks like by default. So this is just your standard. This is Gutenberg. And if we look here, our ACF stuff is here at the bottom. So we've got Gutenberg because it takes up all the space and then the ACF stuff at the bottom. Okay, so what I did was to alleviate some of this stuff, I did the, using Chrome, I went through, right-clicked on all the elements that I had issues with and inspected the elements. And these are some of the ones that I had trouble with. All right, so um, let's start one. It's not really a problem, but we're going to hide it because we're going to hide uh, number, I say number three, it's actually number four. It's the middle part. Um, number two, the admin link is too close to the update button. So with Gutenberg, whenever I'm hitting the update button, I keep hitting, does anybody else do this? You actually hit the top and it takes you to the admin section? Okay, so I'm not alone in that. All right, cool. Um, solidarity. All right, and uh, Let's see. Um, oh, yeah, Gutenberg's too tall. It forces all the ACF stuff at the bottom. And the ACF stuff, in my opinion, is not that obvious. Um, so it's sort of hidden. And one of the things I want to say is, is we don't use, in this particular application, if you want to call it that, we don't use the text editor all that much. The focus is going to be on the magazine lister and all the ACF stuff. Okay. All right, and this is my uh, WP admin JS file. And I'll go over what this does exactly. But you, what I, in clicking on all this stuff, the editor and all this stuff, um, the editor post editor, the post wrap area, the WP expand, all that stuff, um, we're going to toggle that and hide that. So what that's going to do is let us toggle the main content area. Now I have the classes in there for the default WordPress editor. Um, I'm also going to cover how to add Gutenberg to custom post types, which it doesn't do by default. So some of that you don't need, but if you put it in there, it's not going to matter. And the post header toolbar, that is this thing. When we hide Gutenberg, that's number one. We're going to hide that when we hide the Gutenberg stuff. We're not disabling it. We're just hiding it. Okay, and this is, oh, yeah, this is some of the CSS classes that I'm using to hide this stuff. So the editor, that's the display none. That's what we just saw on that. Post header toolbar, that's that little thing over on the left, the number one. That's what that is. The, uh, Oh, yeah, and then when we toggle it, when we add, we're going to add a show class, so that's going to give it an opacity one so we can see it. Um, editor, and there's probably better ways to do this. Some peop Somebody said you could have done this with a plugin. Yeah, but I was on a roll, so I just kept going with the CSS stuff. Um, and uh, setting the post editor height a maximum height of 50 VH, which we really don't need to use. That much. That, that's, that's optional. You don't have to do that. We actually don't have to do any of this. And uh, to do these, uh, to toggle this stuff, uh, these are my styles for the toggle buttons. 
Um, so, and then again, these are built in ACF, and uh, this is still the free stuff you can do with ACF. Okay, and this is what it looks like. So I'm using the message thing in ACF. So here's my toggle button. You see I did that class, admin toggle, and that's also going to be with the JavaScript columns. And to log out, um, I, I'm doing that class, and it's uh, the href to the location of the, uh, the logout button. Um, and that was part of the, the top of the part where uh, Howdy Scott, not, that's, I had that. Okay. Okay. So by default, and I'm going to minimize this a little bit. Well, I'll go, whoa. Okay, so <coughs> by default, um, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, Gutenberg does not, is not added to custom post types. Is that correct? Okay, so what you're going to need is this part that's highlighted in yellow, and that's show in rest equals true. And then you put your support in your array. So you don't have to put everything in there. That's to show everything. If you're not going to use comments, don't put that in. If you're not using a thumbnail, don't put that in. Okay, and let's see. And if you're going to add categories, which I think is kind of weird, you have to do the same thing. So for my pulp collection, I have to do show and rest is true. So that means I can see my categories in my new custom post type. And you can see that at the bottom. I did not know that at the time of WordCamp Raleigh. So I didn't talk about that then. And I think the last thing, these are the admin CSS classes. So I'm also going to, with that toggle, or not with a toggle, but in the style sheet, I'm going to hide the left admin stuff that you might not want the client to see. So that's your plugins, your uh, theme editor, your themes, um, all that stuff. Again, you can do this with a plugin, but I'm doing it in CSS because, again, I was on a roll. And the admin bar, these are all the classes. So creating a new post, we're not going to be using that. We're not going to be new media, nope, 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 new user, nope, comments, nope, and all that stuff. We're not going to be doing any of that. And this is, again, this is for, like, in my job, I try to build the website so that the client does not shoot themselves in the foot. And yet somehow they keep finding the guns and extra ammo, and that ammo is foot-seeking bullets. <coughs> um, Oh, okay, so one other thing about this uh, that I really that I didn't realize at WordCamp Raleigh either is that when you're using Gutenberg, um, you can you have the block manager, which is right here, and that will remove blocks. I don't know if you guys knew this, but you can, whoops, you can remove extra blocks by disabling them here. So we're going to do that too. We're going to limit the number of blocks because they're not going to... Oh, and, <laughs> and then... I'm also going to hide the block manager so they can't go back in and add blocks after I've hidden them. I know it makes me seem like uh, a control freak, but you know what? I don't. Th they my, the people actually call me at seven o'clock at night while I'm cooking dinner, so this is all to not do that. All right. So again, this is the default look. And the first thing I want to do is like if we click this. How are we? How much? What time is this over? Twelve thirty. Okay. I got plenty of time. Uh, any are there any questions so far before I do this? Am I making sense? Okay. If not, you're not going to hurt my feelings. A lot, maybe I don't know. Um, sorry about that. And I'm going to do edit. <coughs> and the reason I'm doing this now because I'm going to switch themes. It's going to cut everything off. So I'm going to click this, I'm going to go into my, now I want you to remember, like, remember this block manager, right? All right, so I'm going to, it also has other things, but I think it's worth it to hide it if you're trying to protect your client. So I'm just going to cut off everything, and then I'm going to select only the stuff I want them to be able to see. Because we're not going to be using short code in this, we're not going to be using embeds. Okay. Cool. All right. Oh, whoops. I need to add something there because I'm not going to be able to edit anything. All right. So, block manager. So, we're going to use paragraphs and header. And I guess maybe code. They can't do much damage with that. Yeah, they can actually, but why not? All right. And code, just so you can see it. All right, so I'm just going to leave those six things. And you're going to have a seventh, and that's the reusable block, but we want to keep that. All right, so now if we look at this, when they add stuff, they only see these. 
things. Nope. They will not. They will not be able to. Nope. It only, as a matter of fact, if I look for, what's another name that's missing here? Embed. Or, or embed. You're not going to find that either. So embed, they just see custom. So no, that's gone too. Behold. All right. Uh, so we're good with that. I'm going to click update, although I didn't change anything. All right. One other thing I want to show this, like, like this is, what is this? Natto is the font they're using for this. On um, my, the client side, whatever, the front end, the website, it's uh, Manasarat. And I hope I'm pronouncing that right, the font. All right. So now, and I've set up <coughs> a couple of different themes. This is the default one. So now let's switch, not theme editor. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to switch to three and watch what happened. Boom. So we lost like 50% of the sidebar. They can only clear the cache if they're going to add something new. They can only do this. Now, if I'm in there and I need to get to like, so if we go wp-admin, so all that CSS stuff that I had in there earlier, that's what this was. Okay. Um, so if we go to our pages, you see this. There's our, and we edit this. And back to your question, what happens when they do that? They go to the block editor. It's gone. Yeah, because in the CSS that I did back in my presentation, I used the the last. So if you look at this, uh, components the nth child two two being nth child two is next to last. That one. So if they go and change things, I might have to change this. But for right now. I did. Uh, you mean the the WordPress editor, yeah. CSS editor? No, I did it. I did it on when I was building the theme. You can, okay. but uh, yeah, I don't. I don't typically like to edit stuff from WordPress from the back end. Um, I did here because nothing else worked, so I did it while I was in my the cabin I was staying at. Okay, so uh, here we see that, that we don't see the Gutenberg stuff. Um, now I've hidden. All right, notice we can't accidentally take ourselves to the back end. And over here, we have our toggle content and our logout buttons. Now, if you don't want to show that, you can do that. And again, that is all in advanced custom code. I probably need to switch back so you can see how I did that. Well, I did show you I did that. But so there, now we see our Gutenberg stuff. There's all our, and we notice that the stars show up because we included um, the Montserrat and the materials icon. So I'm adding custom font styles to the back end editor of this. So, uh, all right, so we toggle the content. If I want to log out, click that. So they can still log out. And you can still log out from if, you're, if you do view page. Oh, also eliminated some stuff from the, from the what is the front end? This is technically, is this the front end or is the back end? Yeah, this is the, this back is the end. but you're, I'm a front end developer, but I'm editing the back end. And you would think like, I've been doing this for 12 years. You think I would know the difference. All right, so we see new, we eliminated page. Uh, we just see pulp and we're not, because we're not using post or anything like that. Yeah, I did that. Oh, that's TSS. I forgot to add that, yeah. too. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, if it adds, it like, 15. It's got an opacity of zero. Mm -hmm. So when you roll over, it, it gives it a full opacity, and it gives it had a negative value up. So then it slides down. And you, and you set your uh, body to position absolute top left zero. And that, because sometimes you'll get that gap. A lot of times you're editing this. I don't want to see it because it throws it off by putting that, you know, 30-pixel, 40-pixel gap in between there. So yeah, and now if I go back, edit page. All right. So let's go look at the pulp section. So like I was saying, this consists of. Uh, oh yeah. So let's. All right. So let's add a, add a pulp. So we're going to actually use this. All right. So I'm going to add an issue of Captain Future. All right. And there's our categories right there. All right. So and have a text document open. Well, I'm going to talk about Captain Future. All right. So I'm going to add a 19. So the way I, this is, is, you know, I've uploaded I've got a directory called pulps. And all I need to do this is use. Okay. So this is, this is again, uh, advanced custom fields. Um, I'm not bringing in over the Guten si Gutenberg side over to this because we don't need it. So there's no toggle. We're not going to be adding any text with this. We just need these um, three fields. 
here. So, and I'm not counting the title because that's a default. So I'm using that. I'm putting in the link, and this is going to spit out the uh, URL for the poll. And I'm going to put in the publication date is, whoops. Oh, man, I hate it when it does because I forget how to zoom back out. Command zero, thank you. Okay, and there it is. That's oh, wait, that's not the publication date. That would be July 1943. I'm going to add my thumbnail, which I already did. Oh, and one thing, you see this little arrow beside the select? You don't see that because if, you were, if I were to go in here and hit edit, and I were to go, I'm going to make this 399, and then scale, and then click back, well, never mind, because usually it would see there was a little square with nothing in it, so I added a little arrow, but that was because a client complained about it. All right, and I'm going to assign this to a category, and that is going to be Captain Future, and then Publish. Okay, now that we've created our single pulp, we're going to add this to a pulp collection. And so these are all my pulp collections. And I'm going to do by, oh, I'm going to do by title. A, B, C, D, C, Captain Future. Okay, now again, we do have, it's going to show up like the homepage did. All right, so right now we don't see Gutenberg yet. But also added some CSS to my uh, ACF stuff. So it helps differentiate between, so we've got it colored sort of like the Brazilian money palette, I guess you'd call it, um, the pastels. So it's 40, so we know it's 1943. So I'm going to do, put in my category, so it's going in that category that I added in the pulps. It's only going to show Captain Future issues. And I sort of changed the nomenclature because when I was building this, I wasn't sure to do it, but I know that it's 4307. All right, and then I'm going to click Update. Now, I'm going to add content to this because, like, typically you're not going to add a lot of content, so that's why Gutenberg is not first and foremost in this. Most 90% of the time, you're going to just be adding pulps to this. You're going to rarely use um, the text editor. So, I've got my copy for that over here. So, let me just take this here and paste this in. And there we go. So, there it is, automatically adding my blocks do that and not have to do anything. So yay! And all this was taken from Wikipedia, so I'm totally ripping them off, um, just for this example. All right, and update. Oh, and now when I was doing the, the example I was using, when I was talking about the object ID, that's when I go through and I'm finding the uh, pulp magazine issue that's using that object ID, or no, that's using relationship. So if you, uh, I'll, I'll go back and we'll look at ACF and I'll show you how that works. But this is my copy on Captain Future. These are the issues. And if we go to 1943, this is the one I added here. And if we want to look at this, it will launch the static. All right, so this is the URL I'm talking about where it says question mark issue equals Captain Future. That's what's telling it which directory to go to and pull all the issues out. So you get this really cool pulp reader thingy. You got the... And so I sort of took some design cues from the, uh, the Nook. Uh, I know it's not as popular as the other one, what, the Kindle, but, or what was it, the Kindle? I don't remember, one or the other. All right, so we go back to that. Okay, so that's how it works. Now that we've created our pulp collection, we want to add this to the home page. So let me go to my pages, edit, and our magazine lister. Again, we're not adding any content. Oh, no, we don't have to do that because it's already been done. Once we update that, we go to the home page. Oh, let me, yeah, I should have gone back and done that again. All right, so if I'm adding a collection here, I would go, let me delete Captain Future here and add it again. So let me delete this. And again, this is just a repeater. And it's going in between Captain Satan and Captain Hazard, which, where else would you put him? Um, F, wait, is that right? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, L. No, that's right, it goes before Captain Hazard. Whoop, 
Oh, I keep that. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's already added. Remove. And that's in future. And we go down here and we'll see that's in future. And we are still getting the copy that we put in on the page. So it's pulling in the, the, the now I'm only specifying that it pulls in that field, the content field and this stuff. And our 1943 issue is right there, the one with the lady and the bird dude, whatever. Um, not the most plausible of scenarios. All right, uh, any questions? Anything you want me to go into more detail about on this? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Let me go back into my, so we can get to that. Um, so if you need to go back to, if we go to theme, if you using CSS, because the theme still exists, I can do this and go back and activate the original one. So and that will, yep. yeah, but not, the, not what the client sees. So, I mean, not what the client sees. The client will still see this, not what the people looking at the website see. Except for all the, the, the dumb crap I did a few minutes ago. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so custom fields. Um, let's look at this. So uh, if we're going to look at the collection builder, I believe is what it's called. Again, I used, I, I when, I, when I first bought Popular, I was surprised that Popular Library was available. <coughs> so you know, I had to buy it because, you know. Okay, so let's see. Issues. All right, so if we look here at relationship. Issues. All right, and we're p filtering by, uh, so you, it's, it's an advanced custom field, so you're going to go in, you add your field, and it is issue, is what I called it. It's a relationship, and we're going to select a post type, which is just pulp. That's the only one we're going to. And we're not going to be the f uh, use taxonomies, because that will let you look at other stuff, and we're not really using them. And search and text. I mean, that's the categories we added. So there we go. And we're not using a featured image. And we're doing the post object. All right. So that's what that does. So if we go to our theme, um, you know, just so we can look at what that looks like. And part of this, when I did this, like I built a uh, one of the websites, I built an ad builder using the same methodology, so you create your ad, and then you can go in and uh, add a group of ads and things like that. Um, when you're putting ACF stuff within ACF stuff, oh, good Lord, it, you get lost because you're drilling down, down, and you're keeping it like the same name. You're using the subfield, although it's inside something, it is inside the subfield. So that, but um, let me see if I can find this. Oh, I think it's test builder because they didn't change the name of it. Either way, they're going to essentially do the same thing. Okay, so. Oh, it's uh, builder.php. Yes, I pulled it out because it's in a separate thing. You would not include. Yeah, I know I should be using git template part, but yeah. All right, so I set this up. Um, let's make this a little bit bigger. So we're going to query a post. In this case, it's pulp collection and negative one. So we're going to include as many. Uh, so not going over that part, uh, the head, and then the ACC body, uh, and then wait, does this this is this part one? Oh, yeah, no, no, but that's no, that's part's correct. It's the collection builder part. So that's our subfield is the collection builder. That's the w that's the repeater, and then the covers, and then the year. And then, okay, so right here, get subfield issue, if have post. And then, so you're doing this. So this, uh, uh, the, the issue thing, this is where it's doing the relationship stuff. And by default, when you see all the, all the, the ones being pulled in, so you can pull in, um, like for 1943, there are multiple ones. You can click those, and it puts it inside this loop. So you're only seeing the ones that you click for that particular year when you, when you add them. And that's what this is doing inside the pulp item. Inside, actually, it's inside this part right here, from here to where the for each ends. So it's inside a loop, and that's why you're able to show each issue that you click shows up in that thing. 
but this is uh, like if you're using post to post to many to many relationships, you're doing that. That's what this does. So you essentially replace that plugin. Um, um, any questions? Um, uh, sorry if this seems a bit disjointed. Um, okay. Um, uh, I don't know what else to do. Okay, so one last thing. Um, I'm sort of hesitant. To, all right, so I'm a little hesitant to show you this because it's sort of I'm something I'm working on, but I don't know if it's – I'll show you anyway because we have – how much time do we have left? 30 minutes. 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Um, okay. And this, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail how I did this. I just think it's pretty freaking cool. All right, so if we go back to my presentation, and I said, if we have time. So are you, is anybody here familiar with ReadyMat? Nobody. Uh, is anybody here familiar with Adobe Spark? Okay, so, yeah. So uh, essentially, Elementor does what Adobe Spark does. Um, uh, what about, uh, let me see, so ACF, we've talked about Elementor. Anybody, who here is familiar with Elementor? How do you all feel about it? Better than Visual Composer. All right, so. <laughs> In the do I don't know, how, how much should we badmouth the other? I have had to use a lot of stuff. I've used Divi, and this is, when we have clients like ours, some of them want stuff fast, and they're cheap, and so you have to pick the best solution for them. And, you know, using, like, left my own devices, I'll build it myself, but Elementor is the only one that I fe think gives the client the, that gives them a quality product and is quick for us to build. So what I did was, this is kind of an expensive solution. This is like $450 to do this, I think. But uh, using ACF Pro, Elementor Pro, and Slides, um, I built this. So when Adobe came out with the magazine stuff when the iPad first came out, uh, it's cool because now I wanted to build like an online magazine um, like you can, like you used to do with the, uh, I forget what it was called. You'd build it with Adobe InDesign, um, wire and stuff like that was built with that. Okay, so this is slides. And this is the same thing I built, and it's a little bit sluggish on this. But you go through, and you got all the cool stuff here, and then you see the cool animations. These are slides animations. This is not um, Elementor. And add some... Slides a framework. It's designed. It's made by a company called Design Moto. And I think they do like some weird licensing thing. I think it's like $140. But essentially, I get the HTML and CSS, and I take it. And I oh, so a little, little bit about me. So uh, I do stuff like this. I have, an, I have worked for CCL Branding. I have another office in Greensboro where I do freelance stuff. And a lot of times, I go on the weekend. I'm like, hey, let me see what I can cram in WordPress. This is something I crammed in WordPress just for fun. Um, so if we click this, um, we get the – there's a motor window, so we can watch the trailer for that. Ah. Damn it. Sorry for the potty mouth. All right, and so you get these cool transitions like this. I got this background. And then this is just stupid, you know, placement type. But you got the cool uh, scaling effect, so as you look at this, it scales up. Um, I'm using custom fonts. That is using uh, the Gutenberg uh, um, when you do the typography settings and things like that. So if we – let me pop this out of full screen. So the way this works is – that ain't it. There we go. It is with, uh, you, you, for me with Gutenberg, you can build templates. Now this is with Gutenberg Pro. So what I did was I went and I built a series of templates in Elementor, yeah. Okay. What, what did I say? Oh, I'm sorry, Elementor. And over here we get these. ID numbers, the 496, 467, right? So if we look at one of these, I'm going to look at the one for Matt Baker, a comic book artist, an African-American comic book artist from North Carolina, by the way. He was born here. 
So we get a sample of, so this uh, created like one simple slide from slides, and this is what it looks like. But if we do, uh, let me go back, and I do edit, and where, where, where was my baker at? Here we go. Edit with Elementor. There we go. So we get a full drop and drag editor so I can go in here and click on my blocks. Like if I want to change the width on this um, column width, that should be, you know, I can do that. I can go in and delete stuff. Add new stuff. Drag stuff around. Oops. So to me, this is sort of similar to the way we do things in, uh, well, I say it's kind of like Illustrator, but not really. Um, and I think if I grab it right here in the middle, I can pull it out and change the width like that. And then add new images, stuff like that. And add these individual blocks. Go in and change the typography. Just go nuts doing this. And I'm not going to save this. All right, so that's one thing I built in Elementor. I'm not going to save that. Then if I go to the, to the home page, what I'm doing is I'm taking each one of these and putting it within the slides, the loop. So if I go here, edit, all right, and so here's our page builder. And so I'm doing essentially the same thing I did on the other one. Uh, let's see where that Matt Baker's next to last. So I can go here and I click, it's going to go through all my templates that I created. And I'm going to select Matt Baker, and then I can do like template settings. Whoops, that's Carol Lombard. That is not Matt Baker. Look, two vastly different people. I'm not using a background image with this one. And I can ha set the slide page setting. That's the slide thing. Now, I have effects over here, so I'm going to switch this over to Zen. And this is how the slides transition when I go between them. And that, you know. So where they were sliding before, now we're getting a different transition. I don't know if you guys would notice that, but anyway. Yeah, and it's the, now this was done the same way. This is using the same object ID we used in the other one. Um, if we go to our custom fields, and again, bypassing Gutenberg altogether because we're not really using it. Um, Uh, I don't build templates in element. Oh, wait, you mean the, the, you mean like, oh, yeah. in, for in this particular case, yeah, I am. And Elementor does a cool thing where it lets you save, uh, like chunks of templates. So use it over again. So the titles and things like that, I can go in and put those individual parts in and use them over again. I can change the text. It won't, you know, it'll, it'll retype, but it'll keep the same text style. And there's this other thing where you can copy a, a, a template element. Co you do copy, and then you go to another one, and you can do copy style, and it will copy over the, all the CSS changes you created from Elementor, and that's really cool. So. Yeah. So th this is, th th again, this is what I'm saying. This is what sort of cost me my job because they didn't need me to do development, really, and they didn't need me to do design anymore. And I didn't feel bad about that because I was kind of tired of working there anyway. And they really didn't need me. I'd been there for 12 years, so it was time. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> um. So, no, there was actually no animosity. I was fine with it. They said, you know, we're cutting ties. And I went, okay, I got a job interview on Tuesday. So, <laughs> but also got, like, severance, too. So I'm glad, you know, yeah. I waited. That was good. I like two months severance for that. Um, oh, and then one thing, uh, where is it? The, the, the slide ID. Okay, that's not the slide ID. It is the, I'm trying to find, the, oh, there it is. That's where, again, it's the template name. That's the post object. So we're looking at that, and I'm specifying that we're using template is, the, is what we're using. So that's the uh, Elementor template. And, and that, in that particular case, I'm using the, po uh, the uh, post ID versus the post object. If you're using relationships, um, I'm using the post object. And, uh, and they essentially do the same thing. This one doesn't, isn't going to do a repeater like the other one did. You're not going to get, I want to select one from July, August, like we did in the pulp thing. So um, I hope. Y'all were able to take something from this. I don't. I it, 
I don't know, like I've been doing this for 12 years, so I do this stuff, and I don't see anybody, it, and I don't mean this to brag, like, I, I, I don't see anybody else doing this, so I don't know if this is a particularly good idea, if any of the stuff I'm doing is particularly smart, I don't have anything to compare it against, so, um, but uh, again, that's not, I'm trying to say it so I don't look like an arrogant, pompous ass, is, um, I, I, I do this all, I mean, I do this for fun. And so, uh, again, is it a good idea? I don't know. Um, I think it's kind of cool, whatever. Um, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to ramble. Any other questions um, about this? Yeah. Well, um, but I'm glad you liked it. Um, and I think, one other thing, let me show you. Uh, it, this is also, I, did, I built this the exact same way. So my presentation is a series of... Um, because this was all built with drop and drag too. So if it ever gets to the back end. So there it is. There's me. There's all my slides. So I have multi slide. And that was, I got this from, I think, Cody House. It's, uh, again, I took some, it, w w everything we do in WordPress, the WordPress is all, but we're standing on the shoulders of giants, meaning other people have done the hard work. Um, and it's sort of like the same thing they said in Jurassic Park, except if my stuff breaks, breaks uh, dinosaurs don't eat everybody. Um, but so I went through and I color coded this and made it easier to see. I've got, you know, the multi slide and then single slide stuff. So I took somebody else's work and then crammed it into WordPress with the help of somebody else's stuff. So I'm using like every stuff everybody else has built and then doing very little work on my part. How so that it was, uh, yeah, it's, it, uh, and I think, I don't remember where I got it from. It's in my, it's in the, my GitHub repository. So that's uh, on the front. Oh, you, oh, by the way, if you want to look at this again, if you want to relive the magic, um, it's uh, <laughs> presentations.scottsaunders.design is where I put it. And I should give it a name, but so, but uh, th that's where this is. So, and that may change if I do another work because that's a subdomain I set up and all that stuff. So, um, well, cool. Thanks for coming and hope, uh, hope there was something you were able to take from it. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll add WordCamp Asheville to that, so it'll be Scott Sonnet slash WordCamp Asheville. I think it actually may be that, um, but because I'm setting it as the home page, we're just getting dot .design, so. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll email him, yeah. Cool. All right, so that's it. I um, hope you liked it. Thanks.